way above me. <laughs> You're jumping. <laughs> channel. If you've been keeping up with me on social media, then you already know that last week I was in Texas for Texas A&M University Corpus Christi Bassoon Week. Now I was there for the last two days as their guest bassoon artist. As part of my events while being there, I went out with Scott Poole, who's the bassoon professor there, and his double reed studio to go ahead and harvest cane. Now cane is the material that we utilize in order to make reeds. For me, I wanted to see firsthand the process of selecting a good piece of cane as well as the aging process before it ever becomes a reed and I thought you guys might also want to see this process. We're here uh, we are about a week and a half past the new moon and we're gonna harvest some cane in Texas it's uh, what February 23rd yeah so right in the middle of winter the cane is dormant uh, next month it'll start growing again so we want to uh, we want to harvest while it's still at a dormant phase. In order to select a good piece of cane for bassoon reed making, there were three elements that we were looking for. The first of these was to make sure it had a large enough diameter. We were looking for anything that was 25 plus millimeters in diameter. What does that say? 28.23. We have a viable specimen. The second element we wanted to make sure was that it had leaves that were growing, arms. Now this gave us the knowledge that the cane was two plus years of age. Step two, we have to make sure that the piece of cane is growing arms, like this guy. The third element, which is something that Scott does that I don't think many other reed makers do, is that he makes sure that it passes the bend test. By making sure it passes the bend test, it's much more flexible and pliable. He has done his research on it and he noted that in the very origins of harvesting cane in France that the fishermen would take the musicians out. Now the fishermen would keep the best cane for themselves largely because they were looking to make fishing poles out of the cane. So they wanted to make sure that the cane was flexible and pliable enough that it could bend if they had a large fish on the other end of the pole and that it would not break in half. The best specimens have to pass the bend test. We're taking this and I'm gonna bend this sucker to the ground. See how it broke? So, we move on. Wow. That's a heavy fish. <laughs> One of the great elements about the cane that is growing in Texas is the wind. That wind is fantastic because it helps the cane become strong. I also found that it vibrated. When I held on to the cane, you could feel the vibrations of the wind in the cane. So as it is growing, it's not only becoming strong, but it's flexible blowing in the wind and it's growing with vibration, just like the wind we will put through the reed as we play our instruments. I was also fascinated in the cane field by seeing portions that had had burned but there were still new sprouts of cane growing. Now this is in large part because there are rhizomes underneath the ground that help the cane grow. So if you are interested in growing your own cane at any point you do need to take into effect the conditions of where the cane will grow but also be completely prepared that it could take over wherever you plant it. I do have to note that as we were tramping through the cane fields I was warned about looking out for Texas critters. Lucky for me the only critters that I saw were some really cool cool Texas leaf cutting ants. Once we left the cane field, it was time to go ahead and put the cane up for storage. Once we chop the stalks, we bring them home, this outer husk, we take it off. There are some regions when you're doing mass production where they just, they leave the husks on, they make a little teepee with the best pieces in the middle, and then they just dry that way. They dry out in the element. However, I do a small production, uh, mostly for myself and my studio, so I want to take these husks off because if we leave those on there, there's a chance that you might get mold inside. And so by taking these husks off, we make sure that as the cane is drying over a year, over two years, that it gets plenty of air circulation. And it can breathe. Very can smart. Breathe. Look at how green it is, just because it's like a baby. It's green inside. If 
you were to look at this from the road or from a distance, that brown husk would make it look like it's it's just dead. Yeah. But every time you take the husk off, you can see that it's all green, and that's what that's what protects the plant uh, from the elements while it's in its dormant phase. And then once we take all of this off, the stalk stays in its in its length for a whole year. I keep them in the garage with air circulation. Once it was stored, we took a year old piece of cane and we segmented it. Now, it's important to note that in between each of the different nodules of the cane that it is not hollow. Cane is hollow through the major portions of the tube, but where the nodules are, it is not hollow. So by segmenting the cane, it does allow the cane to better breathe. After the stalks have sat for a year, they look almost dry, but they're not quite all the way dry. So what we do, is we take them and we're gonna cut them into individual segments. And I use just a Dremel saw, but you can use just about any saw that you want. You'll cut just right above and below each nodule. had segmented the cane, Scott went ahead and placed the tubes of cane in old Parmesan boxes. Now Parmesan is of course a style of cheese. These boxes of course allow the cheese to breathe as it is aging and he has some of these that he keeps on hand specifically for tube cane as it waits one more year before we can actually gouge it, shape it, and profile it and turn it into a wreath. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed coming on my cane harvesting adventure. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss a future video, and you're not already, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, but you want to know the instant I do upload, you can go ahead and click the bell for notifications. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.